you know, I'm proud of our guys, uh, especially for how we responded in the second half. It was a, the first half was another 20 minutes of kind of like a carryover from the last game and um, wasn't pretty. Um, it was actually ugly. Um, but I thought we continued to defend and somehow we had a lead at the half. Um, I thought we did some really good things in the second half. You know, we're a team that's struggling with confidence. You know, stuff for us is different this year, and guys are having to get adjusted. And what I mean is that for this group, because of, you know, some of the momentum that we had last year and and creating hope, there are expectations. And that's new for this group. And then we come out and we win the first game, and I think those expectations become even more. And then we have a setback, and it messed with us. And that's what you see. And so that's why I was really proud of what we did in the second half with how we came out. We shot 63% from the field. I think we only had three turnovers. Uh, it was great to see Xavier have some plays like we know he's capable of playing that we've seen before. It was great to see Aldis back on the offensive glass and and, and, and doing that. Uh, Trey made some shots. You know, Justin had a double-double. And so it, it was good just to see the ball go through the basket. We haven't seen we hadn't seen that in the previous 40 minutes, the 20 minutes in the first half, in the last 20 minutes. And so I'm proud of that. Hopefully it's something we can build on and uh, move forward with. Did you expect this kind of outburst from the beast or was it kind of out of No, I didn't. I mean, he hasn't played well just like all of us. And it's not one guy. For us, you know, it's never about one guy. And, you know, we haven't played well especially offensively. We have actually done a pretty decent job defensively in every game we've played. But offensively, we, we've struggled to find a rhythm. And uh, you know, it was good to see him you know, do some things and get back you know, to who he is, which is just this competitive guy that is on the glass and does all the tough, dirty stuff. And, and he did that. At halftime, because the, the difference between the two between the two performances, half to half was pretty was pretty drastic. Well, I think anytime you see the ball go through the basket, that that changes a lot. That's something that helps guys get confidence. Um, and so, you know, our message was continue to defend and offense move and play with confidence. Like they're our shots. Like don't feel the burden and the pressure of every shot that you take. And uh, again, there was a big basket in the second half. We we, we had some movement. We shared the ball, um, you know, and 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 we had some positive things happen. Excellent. I mean, he scored coming out of the second half, but he also was a better distributor too. Do those things go hand in hand for him, or is it I think they do. I think they do because he's scoring and he made some threes. Then you got to come out on him a little bit more. Um, and so I think they go hand in hand. You know, he had three turnovers to start the game and didn't have one for the rest of the game. That was good. Uh, I thought O came in, Oni came in and gave us some great minutes, some really, really positive minutes. And I thought that was able to give X a little bit of a break for him to see the game, just watch it for a little bit and uh, get back in there and have some positive things happen. Coach, you mentioned the defense and what they had done to keep the team in the game. What's your thoughts on the paint play and the rebounds? I thought we rebounded well, especially on the offensive end. Uh, you know, we, 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 we'd like to get a little bit more offensively inside. We have to finish some plays. We have to be able to play through contact. Um, I thought it was okay, but I thought defensively, you know, we did some good things. What's uh, Gerald's status? Uh, he rolled his ankle, not sure when he'll be available. Rolled his ankle yesterday in practice. Coach, I think you've mentioned the Florida State win after pretty much every game this year, kind of having a lingering effect. How will you know when they finally <clears throat> move past that, put that in the rear view? Well, well, I do think we've put it in the rear view. I, I don't think we are still harping on that. I just think there's, there's a different type of pressure that I think our guys are feeling, and it's because of expectations. No one on this team had – the pressure of outside expectations last year. Nobody. And, again, because of how we finished up last year and there was hope and then you have guys coming back and 
all these different things. And so there were there was some expectation coming into the season. And then we win the first game, and maybe those expectations increase. And then maybe the way we think about ourselves increases. And then we're hit with a big dose of reality right away. And, you know, I just think we're a team struggling with confidence and we're, we're still really young. And I, I don't use that as, you know, that as an excuse, but, but it's a fact and it's not an excuse. That's just a fact. And so, you know, we have a lot of work to do and that's why I'm excited. You know, I hope people are excited. Like I'm excited. I hope our guys are excited. I don't, shouldn't say I don't care about people, but I, I hope our guys are excited because we did some good stuff in the second half and we did some stuff that we can build on and we can move forward with. You know, and 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 like we should be excited about that. We have an opportunity coming up um, on Thursday to do something we haven't done this year, which is win two games in a row. And so there should be an excitement about that. And I know I'm certainly going to be that way. And you know, I hope everyone is you know associated with our program. When you you talk about that confidence point, when X sets up, he strokes it pretty good. Is is it his lack of confidence in, in wanting to shoot the ball as opposed to penetrating, or? I think it's just, you know, as a player, confidence is a big part of your game. And if you get down on yourself and start to question and start to think, that can make you a little bit slower. It, it can make you where you're not in, you know, like you don't play off instinct where you're thinking. And we are a team, we are a group, excuse me, that we can't overthink stuff, you know, and, and, and that's happened. Now, part of it has been because of, you know, the way we've been defended in some of these games. Um, and it's different, especially the expectation on certain guys. And so I think that's a part of it. I think, you know, struggling, he struggled shooting the ball, you know, and, and so it was good to see some shots go in today. On Friday you talked about um, when you guys can't run offense, you have to play offense. Did you guys do a better job of that? Tonight? I thought we did a better job of that. They did some different stuff, ball screens. They switched everything instead of trapping it. Uh, I thought we were stagnant in the first half. I thought we had more movement in the second half, and that opened up some driving lanes for us. It, like, we still have to get better of moving it and us moving. You know, a lot of times we just stand and we just watch, and a guy is just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and beat four guys, his guy and the other guys. And so we have to continue to help them understand that and put them in positions where we all can be better offensively. How many of your games uh, where you've been successful have involved – significant number of trips to the foul line. Obviously, you can't make them foul you, but is there something you're doing well offensively that is causing you to get fouled in those games? Well, I just think, you know, we're a team that we're constantly trying to drive. We're trying to get paint touches. And with the way the game is officiated now, these hand checks and things like that, that makes it, especially when you have good spacing, you have movement, and you have some guys that are pretty good off the bounce, you're able to get that at times. How much more, uh, you know, how much more – burdensome or problematic can expectations be, Jeff, when they're sophomores or freshmen dealing with them as opposed to juniors, seniors, guys with a little more experience? I think the juniors and seniors are still dealing with it here because no one's ever won. No one's ever done anything. No one in this program that's a player has dealt with expectations. No one. And there's a different burden when you're expected to do something and if you fail or if you don't, it doesn't happen as fast as – Maybe you want it to happen or people think that it should happen. And you can get in your head. And with the way things are now, especially for young people, there are more avenues for them to see these things, for them to hear these things. And as much as you tell them to not pay attention to it, it's hard to. It's hard for adults not to pay attention to it. And so it's something we have to continue to teach them. For this team, what were your expectations coming into the season? For us to continue to get better, to take positive steps going forward, that was my expectation. I never put, you know, an expectation on a number of wins or things like that. I want us to be the best team that we can be. I knew there were going to be growing pains. Um, I knew our schedule was challenging early, especially, uh, and so that was my expectation, and that's still my expectation. Mentioned deactivating his social media to kind of remove some of that noise you're talking about. Did you encourage that in any way? Were you we had a long talk after the West Virginia game before I came up and did media. And, 
you know, one of the things I shared with him is that, you know, with him, he was a guy last year, like I equated it to Rocky three. <laughs> and, you know, in Rocky one and two, he's this guy from Philly, the street guy, and he hadn't done anything. You think about Rocky two, he's trying to do a commercial. He can't talk. And he's just this hungry dude from Philly. And he's fighting Apollo, and in the second one, he's just, you know, he's got a mission. His, his wife just had a baby. I mean, just all these different things, but he's just this this hungry guy, and then he wins the title. And then as Rocky Three starts, like, he's the man. He's doing commercials. He's in all these things, and then he's getting ready to fight Clubber Lang, and that's who he was. And he's not that anymore. He's big time. He's, you know, whatever, and he gets his butt beat because he's lost his edge. And sometimes when you have success, it can make you lose your edge or what you perceive as success. You know, he broke the freshman scoring record. He was a guy last year that was incredibly hungry because no one knew who the heck he was. There was no expectation for him. And all of a sudden, you know, you have a, you have a good year individually, and so there's an expectation of, well, I could be a pro. Like, it's something I've dreamed about. Maybe it's close. And success can make you soft sometimes. And so we talked about that. We talked about reading all these things, and you can believe them. Either way, like that's how this stuff can influence you. Um, and I didn't know that he deactivated. I had no idea. I just told him, like, you got to get away from it. You have to get your edge back. You have to get what made you really good. And so I'm glad to hear that he did that. That's not something I said in here. I don't tell guys to get off or – that's that, that, that you know, that's their right to have that, but they, they have to learn how to handle it responsibly. So, yes, you talk movies? Huh? was he familiar with the Rocky movies? He said he was. I don't. I don't know if he was, but he said he was. Did you see that edge come back from him? I saw it in the second half. I saw some. I saw some of it in the second half. The confidence and things like that. But like I told him, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not. You know, you have to build that back because. These are habits, man. I mean, all of us know as adults, habits are hard to break. And they're, you know, if, if you have a great habit, then that's that's hard to break too. And so, you know, he has to get back into being that that hungry dude from Northern Virginia that no one really knew about and that came here with something to prove. He, he's got to get back, you know, to being that. And we have to be that as a group. Jeff King talked about uh, you know, his, his history with your father and, and your family. Oh, it's kind of special is, uh, to share a sideline with someone like that. And like who? King, right. Oh, yeah. I, I've known King. Um, you know, when I was being recruited uh, out of high school, I used to go up to Carolina games a lot. They were in my final four. It was really always just two. Um, and he was a player. And so I would hang out in the locker room and – and he was always incredibly cool with me then. And then just over the years, uh, staying in touch in the profession, you know, I think he had a great deal of respect for my dad. I know my dad had a great deal of respect for him. Uh, I think he was – I think my dad was someone that, you know, maybe he leaned on in the profession and and went to. And so, you know, I'm, I'm happy, of, you know, with the success that he's had as a coach and what he's done there at that program. It's cool to see, you know, to see him bring Jr. on. You know, he's taking care of – you know, the, that program, just like the program I played for, you know, you take care of each other. And so, you know, what he's done at Monmouth, you know, he's gotten Derek – you know, Derek Phelps into the profession, Brian Reese, and now Jr. That's a really cool thing to see. Xavier, what, a, what kind of changed at halftime and why do you play better in the second half? Uh, my tempo, no. Uh, they look way better. And once I seen that first, first uh, three job – uh, every day, the hole just open wide up. At least it looked like you were playing kind of angry on the glass there. Did you feel some frustration after that first time? Uh, yeah, I, we feel, I feel like we just needed energy, so I was just attacking the glass hard so to get the team pumped up. Hey, when you got taken out in the first half, I mean, how much did that have on you? Did that make you? sort of refocus it all or maybe amp up uh, your intensity when you came back in? Uh, it calmed me down. Uh, I had three turnovers like you know, on like the first couple of possessions and I was I was just thinking thinking too much and wasn't just playing. 
how do you think that was able to kind of come back to you? Uh, I mean, when I sat on the bench, I just closed my eyes and I just imagined myself thinking back, like, like, just how, when I was sit, used to sit on the bench a lot and not play, and I, was, like, I was just thinking to myself, like, I'm in, I'm in a deep struggle right now still, but like, I'm trying to break out of it. Do you think that three could get you going, not just for the second half, but could get you going as you go forward here? Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna keep on, keep on building. I'm just keep on playing day by day and just keep gradually getting better. Feel like maybe you put too much pressure on yourself, or some of that was coming into this year. Yeah, I did put too much pressure on myself. How important was your defensive effort in the second half to settling things down, extending the lead you had? Uh, that was that was a very important thing. Uh, the team alone, we, we didn't make shots in the first half, like I said. We turned the ball away too much and weren't being strong with it. Second half, we, uh, we just built ourselves up. We had more energy, and we just put the ball in the hoop. As far as newcomers go, I mean, it looked like Justin really stepped up tonight, 12 and 10. I mean, what, what's he been able to bring to your team? Uh, same thing that he did tonight, score. A score from, from a certain extent and, and rebound because he's very long and athletic, so he wanted to do those things. Xavier, you mentioned putting a little too much pressure on yourself. Obviously, you still hold yourself to a high standard, but how are you learning how to manage that? Uh, one, one was cut social media. Uh, I cut Twitter off because uh, I, I was actually doing the things like reading the, reading the stuff that people were saying. It was, it was actually bad, and I was getting my feelings about it. And I was thinking to myself, and then my teammates and, and coaches and coaching staff and were all in my corner and just told me, like, like, don't worry about that stuff. Just keep playing and take the pressure off yourself and just turn. And Coach Coach Cable told me to turn to a pickup game, which I did tonight in the second half. When did you make that change? Uh, well, I tried to in, in, in the beginning, but I didn't work out. <laughs> and then the second half, half, I see that first ball drop, and I just turned it into a pickup. Yo, uh, uh, with uh, social media, though, oh, you cut that off. I cut it off after the West Virginia game because it was it was just bad. Next, please. Um, when you guys have a game where you're getting to the free throw line, you're getting fouled, like, like you to today, especially, are you guys doing something differently? Are they defending you? Like, do you feel like that's something you can control or you can you can do better at, at that? Uh, that's one thing definitely though this year. I see, I seen. I'm a, I'm a big big offensive key, you know, on for us. And so they, the defense is going to try to take me away. Uh, but, I mean, I just can't let that hold me back. What do you thought changed for, uh, for you tonight on these? I mean, there was one play in the second half where you put the ball up, and when it came down, you, like, slapped it back. It kind of looked like the intensity that we saw from you last year. Uh, what do you think was able to kind of bring that back a little bit? Was it mental? Was it just kind of seeing the ball go in? Uh, like, like Xavier said, it's just – we just been down on ourselves lately, you know what I'm saying? So, I was like, we've been getting away from the stuff that we knowing what to do and got us here. So, like, I just had to come back with that dog mentality. And I was just, I just know I wasn't playing like that from the jump. Again, on the season, this last, I mean, the first couple of games, I wasn't playing like it. So, I just had to, like, use this game to get myself back going. When you guys are struggling, I mean, do you guys look forward to the next game just to get it out of your system? Maybe that was a quick turnaround tonight, and you have a quick turnaround on Thursday? Yeah, I really do look look forward to the next game. Uh, just like the, just like when I make a turn, I look over to the next play. I just gotta constantly just have short term memory of what I just did. For you, is it as much a mentality as far as making sure that you're in the right place before a game starts? Is that what's kind of key to you? Yes, sir. Uh, it's basically like you gotta like you gotta take your time before the game. Just sit in an isolated room and just get your mind right. Now that's what that's what you need to do, and that's what everybody did. Like tonight or whatever, so they was just everybody got off to their sub and used the time wisely, and got that's why we got this dub tonight. You all talked about what was going differently and better tonight. Um, what do you feel like you all have to do to keep that going moving forward here and to make what happened in the second half more sustainable? We just got to come out, come out from the jump like that. Like no matter who we playing, like we playing against FSU, we got to have the same energy. Like when we playing against. A team like this, like we got to keep the same motor, same energy, and composure like we did the second half, beginning in the first half as well. Xavier, I think uh, seven of your nine assists were in the second half. Did it feel like you guys were, were more effective moving the ball as a team? Uh, shots just falling. What, what do you think the difference? Was? Uh, everything. I always say everything was going right. Uh, we moved the ball. Uh, so sometimes you got standing in my hand a little bit, but uh, we all we just constantly kept, kept moving the ball. Everybody was making shots and everybody was being happy for each other. Well, it seemed like this one was a pick me up confidence wise after falling to Nickel State, West Virginia. To a team, it looked like a pick me up win. Uh, 
a cognitive standpoint and the fact that you can look, get, look forward to the next, not only the next game, but the next couple of games afterwards? Uh, yeah, uh, like, like our coach been preaching about, like we gotta build on, like even them, like them losses, that makes you make you hungry, you know. Like, you gotta go into the practice the next day and kill it, like attack it hard. Like, your frustration, we all of us take it to heart. Like, we just had to take it to practice and run with it. Like, so like we gotta build on it. We're young, so we gotta build on it.